Yours is pretty good size. I'm kind of concerned about no, mine. Yours is more than adequate. Believe I've, I've really been self conscious. It, it, about can, it. it can do everything this can do. You really think so? Oh yeah, dude, 100%. <laughs> oh, hey guys, what's going on? Today we're gonna to be talking about a very important question. What question is that? Does size matter as far as bear length? Exactly. Now, this has been discussed ad nauseum online. Too much. Online. In fact, uh, if I have to answer one more barrel length question on Instagram, I will. We actually like answering these questions quite a bit. There's a lot that goes into choosing the correct barrel length. Um, anything from velocity to slug to the environment that you're in. We're hoping to hit a lot of those things today. There's also a lot of myths. There's a lot Is of myths. Is one more accurate than other? Is, it, there's just everything that goes into it. So we're gonna to try to test as many of these as we can out to try to give you some good data to help you choose the best barrel length. Now, today we are using Noveski rifles fully built up, and why are we doing that, Micah? Because their barrels are excellent. They're extremely consistent. Super consistent. And what's even better is that all the barrels that we have on these rifles right here are all from the same batch. So from going from the different barrel lengths to the longer barrel lengths, we have about the best consistency we can get. We have no difference in brand between all those, and in my mind, probably uh, as removing as many external factors as we possibly can, barring the fact that we're not actually very good scientists. I mean, you know someone's gonna be like, that one has a different optic. Point is, we tried to remove as many variables as possible. These are all built up in the factory at Noveski, and we have to thank them so much for building these out and letting us use them for their tests. They're gonna head back to them after, and they're all scuffed up. So, without further ado, we're gonna get into it because it's time for some science. Let's do it. Also, you're getting really good at filming. Oh, yeah, I've actually gotten so good, I've figured out how to film myself. This is incredible. Yeah. But before we get into it, we need to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel. Who is the biggest sponsor of the channel, Micah? The Sonoran Desert Institute. Institute. You're not that guy. <laughs> uh, if you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, they are the people to go to, and we cannot thank them enough for sponsoring this channel. And we, of course, have Primary Arms. What month are we in? Nerd Rope May. May. Point is, we also have to thank them for providing all the optics for the rifles that we're doing with today's test. So that was very nice of them. That was mega based. Yeah, that was very nice of them. And then, of course, if you're looking to make your uh, personality based around Multicam Black, we cannot forget Savior Equipment. They're actually awesome rifle bags, and they absolutely rock. And then- I love them. Yeah, we, we love them. And unlike the- uh, camera that we're filming this on and the TV that you're watching this on, AAC Ammunition is sponsored in the US of A and we're using it on today's test. They sponsor all of our ammo and we love it. So we have six different rifles right here. Uh, starting with the shortest right here, we have a 10-3, we have our 11-5, we have a 12-5, we have a 13-7, we have the 14-5, which everybody loves very much so. They certainly do. They love it. And then of course we have the 16, which has been forgotten by everyone. Not by me. Not by us. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start with the shortest and we're gonna go to the longest because that's just the order of things. There's nothing wrong with a short rifle. No, absolutely not. In certain situations, they excel. All right, start with the 10-3 right here. All right. Okay, looks like about 26. So we have a standard deviation of 13, super low. That's not typical of the VMAX. It's usually around 20-ish. That was really good. That just happened to be really good on that one. Um, and then our average was 2633. It's 10. Oh, that one was odd on the standard deviation. We had standard deviation 52 on that one. So average is 27.50 and yeah, average is 27.50. You give oh, me one more yep, round. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, standard deviation of 19.7 on that one. Average was 2802. All right, series four for the 13.7. Good. All right, so standard deviation of 22.4. That's that's around the 20. Yeah, is what yeah. We expect. Seems like we're around 20. Average of 28.53. All right, uh, series five. On the 14.5. Yo. Okay. 
Yeah, standard deviation 33.7, average of 29.19. Series six. There we go, cresting that 3K FPS. Yeah, magic number right there. So we'll talk about that in one moment. Let's check this. All right, uh, standard deviation 27.7, average 29.86. Yeah. So the question is, why does velocity matter? Well, it depends on the round. 5.56, five, in a lot of cases, does rely on velocity, especially when you go to the 55 grain. Most people that I know are shooting 55 grain. Yes. Now, there are better rounds. Yes. Like well, the, uh, yeah, it's exp eight, cheaper. Yeah. 77 yeah. grains, uh, your 69ers, all those are, are awesome, and they will do amazing things even at low speeds. But if you're using 55, you need velocity. If I'm not mistaken, certain rounds rely on certain velocities to tumble, to fragment, do certain fragments, all sorts of things, yeah. The, the 5.56 five, out of a 20 inch barrel going 31 to 3300 feet per second is absolutely devastating. Yeah. The round will yaw, it will yaw, it will fragment, it will break apart in the body and it will be devastating. However, most people that I know aren't running M16s because they're not Giga Chads. <laughs> so if you're running anything shorter, you have to understand that you're a little bit more limited in your fragmentation range. 10.3, famously with 55 grain can only fragment to about 50 meters and past that it has a little bit of trouble. Am I saying that a 10.3 isn't gonna kill? Absolutely not. You put a 55 grain through somebody's brain, they're still they're dead. Die. But if we're talking about trying to get the maximum amount of energy and the maximum amount of uh, lethality out of our rounds, we have to understand that certain barrel lengths aren't gonna provide that at longer distances. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna check the data with our engineer, Christian. Hey. So we're gonna look at three things here. We're gonna look at the biggest increase in FPS, we're gonna look at the smallest increase in FPS, and we're gonna look at the total increase that we saw from smallest barrel length the biggest barrel length. So Christian, go ahead and take us off. Yeah, so the biggest FPS gain is between that 10.3 and the 11.5 with 117 FPS Which between the two. They haven't seen this yet, but that is psychotically High. higher yeah. than yeah. all the other barrel lengths. BCM predicting everything, talking about the 11.5 and how much better it was. They really drove that conversation oh, back in the day. 117 is kind of nuts. It's crazy, yeah. It's uh, it's about 50 to 70 FPS between all of the other um, barrel lengths. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, and then the, the lowest is gonna be between the 11.5 and 12.5, and that's gonna be 52 FPS gain between those two. So it looks like the lowest two gains are from 11.5 to 12.5 and from 12.5 to 13.7. Those kind of mid barrel lengths were, were smaller than what we saw. Yeah. Yep. And then the total uh, FPS gain between 10.3 and 16 is going to be 353 FPS. Really interesting. Yeah, the one thing that I want to point out too is we've seen a lot of talk about 14.5 to 16 about it not being a big increase at all or being very negligible. Second biggest but it's increase. One of the, it's the second biggest increase um, when it comes to uh, FPS. So there is certainly a difference between 14.5 and 16. So we have to note on that. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and let's get to our next, next test. test. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, hey, everybody. Looks a little different right now, doesn't it? Well, that's because uh, it's been two months. Uh, we had a little oopsie daisy and a bunch of our footage corrupted. So here we are again, refilming, and we're gonna go ahead and explain what's going on. So we have all of our barrel lengths that we just tested with velocity. We have our 10.3, we have our 11.5, or 12.5, 13.7, or 14.5, and our 16. Now, we could obviously just show you on a ballistic app what the drop is going to look like at different distances, but we thought it'd be way cooler to actually shoot it out to 300 and show you what those drops are actually gonna look like when each of these rifles has a 100 yard zero. So right here, we have the pinnacle of AR-15 setups. Uh, we have a Vortex uh, 6 to 36 and uh, great little optic on a Scalarworks mount and we have our Noveski 10-3. So we'll start with this guy, work up to 16, and then we'll show you guys the difference in uh, drop between those different bullets because obviously with a shorter barrel you're going to have less velocity Therefore your round is going to be dropping a little bit more quickly than a 16 It's not as pronounced as you'd think but it can make a difference on longer shots So when you start getting out past 300 or getting to 300 you'll start to see that difference So again, if you're just uh, LARPing uh, inner city and it's all 200 and in it may not be that big of a deal But if you're out in the foothills of Idaho like we are right here, you might want a little bit more velocity we have the 10-3, so we're gonna go ahead and take our shots at 300. Oh, 
All right, let's go check them out. All right, first shots with the 10.3. Uh, you can see the amount of drop you had. This was the aiming point. Here's your impact point. We do have a little bit of left to right wind, so that makes sense. It is, uh, you know, 5.56 five, can only do so much. Let's go see how the 11.5 does. All right, we have an 11.5 at 300. Cool. So right here we have our uh, 11.5. So you can see the height difference between the two. Here's kind of the mean group of where the 10.3 was. Here's the 11.5. I will say pretty good group except for the little flyer right here, but could have been pretty pretty dang tight. Way to go, Noveski. So we'll go ahead and we'll step it up to the 12.5 and let's see how that compares. So we have the 12.5. We're going to be shooting at uh, 300. Before we do, a quick note: we are using the same lower between every gun. It's just a Colt lower with a uh, guys that trigger in it because. It works well. A lot of wind, but that's uh, it's another day on uh, Grand Ram Ranch. Our biggest jump was from 10.3 uh, to 11.5 in terms of our feet per second. You can definitely see that. From 11.5 to 12.5, there's a lot less of an increase. So you can see here, here's our 12.5 group. It is significant but as you can see not as large as what we saw from the 10-3 and this is pretty on the money and i will say in this high wind i'm pretty happy with this group right here so not too bad i think i pulled that one i think it would have had a little bit tighter that's my ego on on trial right now so pretty cool you can see it slowly walking up let's go and see what the uh 13-7 does okay we have uh the 13-7 from noveski all right at 300 13.7 did have the smallest FPS increase amongst all of the barrel lengths, and you can definitely see that here. From the 12.5, the 13.7 is higher than the 12.5. You can see our impacts here, here, and here. Pretty good group, actually, but uh, it's not much. So uh, the one thing you can say about a 13.7 is that the gas system is a lot softer than a 12.5, so it is a easier gun, I believe, to get on target and do, do follow-up shots. 13.7 isn't useless, despite the data. Okay, we have the uh, 14.5. 300 yards. Let's go check it out. So to reiterate, my point of aim has been right here. It looks like I did a little bit more of a shitty group right here. So we have a little bit of vertical stringing. Our general impact area is right here. So we do have that increase, especially over the 13.7 compared to the 12.5, um, compared to those. And obviously it's gonna be the case. 14.5 has uh, a significant amount more velocity than the 12.5. So we've seen what the 14.5 is gonna do. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 16. Next up, 16 at 300. All right, let's go see how it did. So we had, we had one flyer, my bad guys, but uh, here's the general level of our 14.5. Here's a general level of our 16 approximately. So um, gained a good amount of height. So you can see coming down from our 10.3 all the way up to our 16, there is a good bit of difference. Now, what's kind of harder to explain is the velocity, especially on a moving target. 16 is nice or 14.5 because the velocity of the round is just a little bit more, it's a little bit easier to uh, get a lead and make sure that you're contacting with those moving targets, especially um, when we consider windy conditions, uh, the longer your slug is in flight, the more it's going to be affected by wind, by other environmental factors. So um, that speed is uh, is awesome. But anyhow, 16, so let's go ahead. Let's print the 16 versus the 10.3. I've been told that the 10.3 and the 16 should have the exact same accuracy. Um, we're gonna figure that out. I, don't, I, think, I think they should. Theoretically, the 10.3 stabilizes 5.56, um, so it should be good. We'll find out. 16 versus 10 3. Start with the 16. We'll see which is more accurate. All right, let's go measure that. Cool. So we are just a smidge uh, under an MOA on this one uh, with one keyhole through one of the rounds, which is pretty cool. So this is. Um, as long as you're doing your part, this is going to be typical of the accuracy you can expect from good ammunition uh, with a low SD. So we will see how the 10-3 uh, does. We have the 10-3 right here, about the shortest you want to go on an AR-15 just due to the way the AR-15 operating mechanism works. Uh, a lot of people tend to opt for this 
the Mark 18 made the, made the 10 3 really popular, and the 10 3 is still used in the military today. So, um, a lot of people have it. Uh, it was one of the first rifles I had, and one of the first rifles that I used like on the channel. I'm a big fan of it. Let's see how it uh, performs. <laughs> well, last round flyer, but it was going good until we had a little flyer there, but that's part of the uh, experiment. So with the Ballistic X app, we ended up with about 1.5 MOA with this group all considered. Not bad, not bad at all. Um, that was 100% me. I think that the 10-3, one thing that we can certainly, I would say, say from the, uh, the initial group that we did while zeroing is that I think they're pretty well matched up. The 16 is definitely an easier weapon to fire in terms of grouping because it's easier to follow on. The recoil is less, the, the bang is less. It's, it's just easier. But the 10-3 definitely has that ability to do it so long as you are doing your part. So with all these things being considered, let's go ahead, let's put all the uppers up, uh, down. Let's talk about them and talk about application. There are a lot of conclusions that can be drawn uh, from the video today. Obviously, there's a lot of factors that come into play, not just myself, but in terms of the type of ammunition that you're using and many other factors. But we wanted to give you guys a good baseline here. So now that we've done everything, I wanna go through each of the uppers and talk about potential applications and pitfalls. We're gonna start with the 10-3. Um, I love the Mark 18, uh, I've carried it, it's, it's awesome. I did early videos on it. And this Noveski right here is also a 10-3. They are wonderful weapons for CQB. They're as short as you want to go, but you're going to be losing a lot of velocity relative to something just a little bit longer, like an 11.5. And in addition to that, the 10-3 is pretty tough on bolts and bolt carrier groups, but especially bolts. You're, you're, I've seen on in general people last from about 5 to 8k depending on firing schedule. So understand that the 10-3 is really going to burn out your components just a little bit harder because the weapon is just going to run harder. That being said, if you need to get into ships, if you need to maneuver and have the tightest CQB weapon possible, the 10-3 is a good option. Now, when it comes to the Grand Thumb crew, we kind of have several different barrel lengths that we prefer, and the 11.5 is definitely one of our favorites if you need to go um, short. It's just a little bit longer than the Mark 18, but at the same time, the 11.5 is much easier on components. Um, I definitely have to credit uh, BCM with really pushing the 11.5 and showing how it both has much better velocity than the 10.3. In fact, the biggest jump in velocity was from 10.3 to 11.5. It really is a great compromise if you want to go short. And unless you're really getting tight in there into those little spaces, I definitely would recommend the 11.5. Bolts tend to last much closer to the lifetime that you'd see at an M4. So uh, in general, the Grand Thumb crew mostly runs the 11.5. Next up, we have the 12.5. Um, the 12.5 is awesome. It is starting to kind of split hairs, in my opinion. Uh, it kind of is that, is that nice in between, kind of like the 13.7. If you want to be on the shorter side and have just a little bit more velocity, the 12.5 is a good option. It is easy on components, and um, obviously the LMT Spec War is a 12.5 as well, and we are big fans of the Spec War, so we have the 12.5. This is the one that Micah hates the most, but he's not here, so he can't uh, bemoan it. But the 13.7 is very interesting. Um, it was one of the smallest increases in performance compared to a lot of the different uppers, but I definitely think that there is a place for it. And the reason for that is that it is easier on the components due to the gas system and your dwell time. But in addition to that, the extra barrel length that you have over like a 12.5 does mean that the rifle will last longer in terms of serviceability and ability to print good groups. So the 13.7 is not useless. <laughs> but it, it definitely falls into kind of a weird area. So uh, in, in general, we're not running them much. If you're not running like an AR-15, uh, there are a lot of different weapon platforms that use a 13 or a 14. Some are right between there just naturally due to their gas system length. So you know, that's kind of a, a moot point, but on an AR-15, generally not our first choice. 14.5 is, I think, one of the best compromises when it comes to barrel lengths on AR-15s. Um, this is something that I've definitely argued with my crew about. Uh, we have long discussions about this stuff. But the fact of the matter is, is that when you go to a 16, yes, the 16's performance is incredible. It's a very soft firing rifle. But if you're in a forest or a mountainous area, you really can't go wrong with the 14.5. It's just at about that performance level 
of the 16 in terms of ballistics, in terms of velocity, um, while being just a smidge more maneuverable, especially in brush, um, especially when you attach a suppressor to it. So I am a big fan of the 14.5. If you have a 14.5, you are not wrong at all. Just understand your holds. Next up, we have the 16. Now, out here in God's country in Idaho, um, we are big fans of the 16 just because we have extremely long sight lines. So being able to really stretch out the AR-15 is, is something that we love. And uh, it really isn't that bad. A lot of people get pretty, um, what's the word for it? Like upset about barrel lengths where they're like, oh, 16 is completely unmaneuverable. I mean, Marines maneuvered in Fallujah with a 20. So a 16 is not bad. Um, you're gonna do fine with it. It gets a little bit unwieldy as you add a suppressor, but the great thing about the 16 is you can add one of the miniature suppressors and you generally have really good flash signature because the longer the barrel length, the less flash you're gonna have. Now, this is a little bit more ammunition dependent, but in general, your 16 is gonna perform better than your 14, and especially compared to like your 10.3. So the 16 is one of our big go-tos. Um, when it comes to me personally, I either use a 16 or an 11.5. That's kind of my, my two go-to lengths in terms of barrels. Uh, Micah's more of a 14.5, 16 guy. Um, and he runs a 10.3 as well because uh, vibes or something along those lines. The point is, there is a purpose to every single one of these uppers right here. Um, you need to understand what the um, benefits are to those, what the cons of those are when you're choosing whatever you're gonna use. And it's gonna be completely dependent upon your environment. So as much as I love the 16, if it doesn't fit your, your needs because you live in a city, well then don't let me force you to use a 16 even though it has incredible performance in terms of ballistics. So. That is our barrel length video. What is the best barrel length? Depends. Hopefully this video is good for you guys. You guys learned something. We like to put out these data driven videos and uh, yeah, we love you guys very much. Get out there and train. That's what's really gonna matter. Um, I'd be much more afraid of a guy with a 10-3 when he's training every day versus a guy with like a, a 20. I mean, I wouldn't wanna get shot with a 20 inch, but the point is if you're training, you're deadly. Get out there and train. That's what we wanna see. As always guys, we got nothing else for you. One thing for you guys. Um, this is something that's, I'm not a philosopher, so it's gonna be hard to explain, but something I've always told people is you aren't what you wanna be, you are what you are. So what that means is somebody be like, I wanna be a good dad. Well, if you're <laughs> just be a good dad, then don't wait. Do it, actualize, actually get after it. There's a lot to be said about people who talk versus people who do. So be a doer. Thanks guys.